Thank you for watching this presentation of our paper that compared immediate versus delayed exercise in men initiating ADT. The use of androgen deprivation therapy or ADT for men with prostate cancer is accompanied by an array of adverse effects. In this study, we focus on the musculoskeletal toxicities that include reduced bone mass and muscle mass and reduced muscle density, reflecting an increase in fatty infiltration and poorer muscle quality. Exercise has been used to counter the adverse effects of ADT. However, these studies have been undertaken with rehabilitative intent, and a more opportune time to intervene may be when ADT is initiated in order to mitigate or prevent adverse effects occurring in the first place. Here we address the question, should exercise be commenced from the outset to prevent ADT-related adverse effects, rather than trying to rehabilitate the patient after their development? We recruited 104 men with prostate cancer commencing ADT and randomized them to an immediate or delayed exercise group. The immediate group underwent a supervised six-month exercise program with no formal intervention in the second six-month period, while the delayed group had six months usual care followed by six months of the identical exercise program. The program was undertaken three times per week and comprised three exercise modes. Resistance training, which consisted of upper and lower body exercises at a moderate to high intensity. Aerobic exercise, which consisted of walking or jogging on a treadmill and cycling or rowing. And importantly, an impact loading component that consisted of a series of bounding, hopping, skipping, leaping and drop jumping activities. The primary endpoints were spine, hip and whole body bone mineral density by DEXA. Secondary endpoints were lean and fat mass and appendicular skeletal muscle by DEXA and muscle density by PQCT. For bone density, there was a loss in spinal BMD by 12 months in both groups. However, BMD was largely preserved at six months in the immediate exercise group. At the total hip and whole body, there was a progressive decrease in both groups over the 12 month period with no difference between groups. For soft tissue composition, lean mass, appendicular skeletal muscle, and muscle density were preserved in the immediate group at six months, declined in the delayed group, but then recovered at 12 months following training. Gains in fat mass still occurred over the study period in both groups. As a result, for soft tissue composition, there was little difference between groups at 12 months. In conclusion, implementing exercise in patients commencing ADT largely preserved spinal bone density, as well as muscle mass and muscle quality. Although undertaking exercise after adverse effects become apparent is beneficial for the patient, we suggest that exercise medicine should be prescribed at the onset of treatment in order to prevent or attenuate their development. I'd like to thank the participants in this study and our funding sources. Thank you.